hey guys welcome back to my channel um so today i kind of wanted to do a brief, brief overview of how i studied for the mcat i know that the mcat is an incredibly intimidating test to study for because it's unlike any other test you've ever taken um but i just want to kind of share how i approached it uh, and hopefully it can help you all out um so basically I ended up purchasing a Kaplan class to study for the MCAT. Because I was a psych major, I felt like I just wasn't prepared for the MCAT since I wasn't like a traditional science major. Um, so I was freaking out about it and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna buy this Kaplan class. I took out, you know, some extra loans. I think it was, it was over a thousand dollars for the Kaplan class. Um, anyways so I bought the Kaplan class and like the actual in-class sessions were more so strategy which I think was incredibly valuable because like I said the MCAT is unlike any other test you've ever taken um, so you'll have long passages and then series of questions you'll have independent questions and you'll have to be able to navigate through the test in a timely manner because each section is timed um and so with the Kaplan class sessions we were basically learning how to triage your questions how to go through and decide which questions you want to answer first we learned how to read through the passages and kind of pick out what information we would need to be able to answer the questions and honestly I don't know studying on my own I don't think I would have been as prepared because yeah I would have studied the material I need to know for the test but you really have to know how to take this test um so I think the in-class session started in January they, they did start in January I can't remember exactly when they ended I want to say it was like before April like March ish um so I went to all of those classes on top of you know the course load that I was taking at the time which was pretty heavy um and so on top of the in-class sessions you also would be assigned homework and uh I I didn't keep up with it I was really bad um and so originally I wanted to take my MCAT in June so I already registered for my MCAT can't remember when I registered um, but I registered to take it in June and this was the new MCAT like I was the first group I was in that first group that I was taking the new MCAT for the first time um, so scared me the door moved um, what ended up happening was um, I pushed my test back to July because like I said I hadn't been keeping up with the homework for the Kaplan class and the homework was basically going through the review books that they give you. Um, so that brings me to my next point as far as studying. Um, the review books were like gold. Um, I read through all those review books probably starting in around like May. I was reading through the review books, doing the questions in the review books, as well as the third thing that I think was vital to me doing, you know, well, which was doing full length practice tests. I would 110% recommend that you take as many practice tests, full length practice tests as possible. Um, and even now being in medical school, how I learn is from doing questions. Um, and so with doing as many full length practice tests as you can, you get a feel for how the test is. And in all honesty, there's only so many ways they can ask you about a certain subject. So like the more practice, the better. Um, so I did the full length practice test. I did, I want to say four, but I hope I did more than that. But I know I did at least four full length practice tests. I really think I did. It was between four and six. It was no more than six. Um, but getting closer to my test date, I was just like, I am not ready. Um, still. So I pushed it back and I actually, I feel like you should only push back your test if you think that you need extra time to study um, and you're actually going to study. Like pushing it back a week or two, you're not really going to get that much more done. But I think since I pushed it from June to like mid-July, 
I think that was extremely helpful. Um, so I ended up, like I said, pushing the test back, but really the keys to my success, I feel like were the um, in-class sessions for Kaplan, learning the strategy for taking the test, the review books, which I can link below, um, reading through those, doing all the questions in those, um, as well as doing the full length practice test from Kaplan and reviewing the answers I got wrong, trying to understand why I got any answers wrong. Um, so yeah, I honestly can say that I appreciate the Kaplan um, course. I don't feel like it was a waste of money at all. Um, and it actually was like significantly harder, I felt like, than the actual exam. So on my Kaplan test, which I don't mind sharing my scores, um, I just don't. I feel like how can I help you if I don't actually tell you how I did, you know? Um, so on the Kaplan practice test, I was averaging like a 494. And all I wanted was a 500 on this MCAT because like I said, it was the, the new one and we we're the first group taking it. So we didn't know what the average was going to be, but it was projected to be around a 500. So I was like, okay, that's what I need to get at least average. Um, but on those practice sets, I just kept getting a 494 and it's like, it might have gone up. I can't remember what my first score was, but I was just, I just kept getting 494. Um, so because I moved my test, I had to take it in Savannah. And so I drove to Savannah, spent the weekend there after the test. The day of the test, I was pretty relaxed. I didn't study that whole night before. Um, I got there and did it and it was over um, and then when I got my scores back I was so happy and so in shock because like I said I was making 494 on the Kaplan practice test and I ended up scoring 508 on the actual MCAT which was well beyond what I had fathomed was possible so um, but now, like as I'm kind of reflecting and beginning my process of studying for step one, um, I really think that what helped me with the MCAT, aside from the Kaplan class, which was amazing, um, was the fact that I did well in my prereqs. Like, yes, I was a psych major, but I still had to take the prereqs for medical school, you know, Chem 1, 2, OCHEM, physics, all those. And I scored, I scored well in those classes. I think my science GPA was 3.5. Um, my actual GPA was higher than that, but my science GPA was a 3.5. So I was decently strong in the sciences. Um, and I think I had a lot better of a foundation than I thought I had. So I was definitely doubting, you know, the knowledge base that I had. And in the end, you know, I think that reflected in my score that I did actually, you know, I knew stuff. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk it? Um, so that's another thing, you know, if you're freaking out about the MCAT, in all honesty, if you're doing well in your science classes, you should be able to do well in the MCAT. It's just a matter of kind of buckling down, studying your weak areas, and just being persistent and not being too hard on yourself. Um, so yeah, I hope this video was helpful um, and gave you just some insight, but questions, 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 do questions over and over and over again. That's for all of your academic courses um, and any standardized test that you're studying for. Um, so if y'all had any specific questions, you can leave them down below um, and I will definitely be sure to check those. Bye.